right, hello everyone. Welcome back to another another lesson and actually another unit, a new unit in um, in decimals. And we're just going to look at just kind of you know how decimals we can use in everyday life, and we're going to learn how to multiply and divide them. So we have a lot of crazy stuff to you know to catch up on, and a lot of it's an extension of your previous year, so it should look familiar. But uh, let's talk about, like I always said, decimals or math is all around it. So the ostrich is the world's largest living bird. I think I think you might know that. And it can have a mass of, and there's this really, really large number. And there's the gram sign. And um, how do you read that number? And what is the meaning of each of those digits? That's kind of what we're going to be looking at in this lesson is, how do I deal with a number with that many digits? And what does it mean? So um, you can do this if you want, and if you don't want to, you can skip ahead, but uh, you'll need a calculator and a copy of the place value chart, or you could just draw one up. And let's just say Jillian measured the time in seconds it took her to write her name and her address. And she wrote this time in a place value chart. So you can see it took her 27 seconds to write her full name and her address. Okay, now I got minutes, hours, and days, so let's see what we do if you get that. So, you know there's 60 seconds in one minute so if I asked you to find Jillian's time in minutes record it now you can use a calculator for this and once you got it down move on okay there's 60 minutes in one hour well why don't you find Jillian's time in hours and record that on the chart and then there's 24 hours in one day how, how do you find Jillian's time in days record that on the chart now, this is not an easy task, but it's something that we could do um, with our with our decimals and our math in real life. So a little bit of review here, but we're we're extending a little bit from the previous year, and I had to do this table the opposite way than I wanted to because the screen didn't, didn't hold all of the the words; it just kind of got too large. Uh, if you see hundred thousands or hundred thousandths, you know it gets really large, and so I've kind of flipped it over sideways. So there are many patterns in this, and You've probably dealt probably mostly in this area here, but we're going to extend it in, in this grade and we're going to hundred thousandths and actually we're going to the millionths. Okay, and the numbers get really, really small, but yet the digits increase. And the pattern is that as you move to the left, each position represents 10 times as many positions to the right or technically below. So we know that there's 10 ones in, sorry, yeah, 10 ones in a 10, and 10, and 10 tens in a 100, right? Well, the same idea still applies that there's, you know, 10 tenths in ones, as you can see here. There's 10 tenths in a one, or there's 10 thousandths in a hundred, okay? So the same idea still applies, it's just that the numbers and the words change a little bit. So here's a picture of the world's smallest insect. It's called a fairfly. And it, uh, if we were to show this on a place value chart, it would show the length of the male fairfly in centimeters. And so I wrote that in there on the place value chart. And uh, you can see we have zero ones, zero tenths, but we have a hundredth, we have a three thousandths, and nine ten thousandths. Okay, so we can place this on a place value chart. And you can kind of see I broke apart in the red there, I broke apart those digits and what they represent. Well, we read this number as 139 ten thousandths. 139 ten thousandths. And we can write this, and this will look familiar. We can write this in standard form, and that's what it looks like, 0 0.0139. Now we can say 0 0.0139, but it's technically correct to say 139 ten thousandths, and it's actually a little bit quicker uh, in a way. We can write this in, oh, good old expanded form, 0 ones plus 0 tenths plus 1 hundredth plus 3 thousandths plus 9 ten thousandths, and we could use that with words or 0 0.01 plus 0 0.003 or plus 0 0.0009, okay? Um, but the most important thing, and I put it in bold, and maybe I'll put a big red star beside it. This is really important. We read the decimal as a whole number, as if there was no decimal. We read it as a whole number. Then we say the name of the position of the last digit. So 
to illustrate that, this is our last digit. Okay, what digit is that in? That is in the ten thousandths. So that is why we're saying this ten thousandths here. We're, we're saying 139, like is the whole number, and then we add ten thousandths on it. So 139 ten thousandths. Well, let's, let's have you try. Um, I'm going to ask you to read this. Uh, read it to yourself, and then we'll check and see if you're correct. Okay, well, you might have said 0 0.235, but that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to say it as a whole number, then say the position of the last digit. Well, let's do some prep work here. Well, 235 is what I see. We're going to say 235, but what place value is that? Well, we have tenths. Hundreds, thousands. So 235 thousands is what you should have said there. Okay, let's try another one. That guy there. Give you a little few seconds to try that out. Okay, again, it's not 0 0.0262. Uh, we are saying 262 ten thousands. 262 ten thousands. Okay. Try another one here. So you should have read 265 hundred thousandths. Okay. So that would be, again, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, 265 hundred thousandths. Okay. I'm a little bit lazy, I'm not going to write that out for you, but you should write it out if you do ever do. And let's try one more. And you guessed it, we're going another digit. Try that out. Now, again, we're reading as a whole number. So I have 26,246 millionths. Okay, 26,246 millionths. Okay, so again, we're reading as a whole number. We add the name of the last digit. Now again, we, we've talked about expanded form, but we can do it again here. So I have 3.268579, and we can break that apart as 3 ones, plus 2 tenths, plus 6 hundredths, plus 8 thousandths, plus 5 ten thousandths, plus 7 hundred thousandths, and plus 9 millionths. And what is the point of expanded form? The expanded form is to show us what does that actually represent. It's fine and dandy to see all those numbers together, but what do they represent? Who are they representing or what, what digit are they representing? So true expanded form I wrote in the red, okay? But we read this a little bit differently because there's a decimal place. We say three and, three and 268,579 millionths, okay? 268,579 millionths, okay? Um, so, we have that one there. Now, I don't know if you noticed this um, before we read this or write this, is that there's a little space right here. And if you remember back to our first unit when we talked about periods and how we separate the hundreds and the thousands and the ten thousands and millions, uh, it, go it goes the other way too. So every three digits, we actually leave a space just like we do um, with whole numbers. Okay. But um, how are we going to write this in expanded form and also try to read it? So I'm going to give you, maybe you take a minute, write it out in expanded form, and then try to read that guy. All right, so we should have 2 plus um, 0 0.6 plus 0 0.02 plus 0 0.004 plus... Well, we have a zero there, so I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do a two. Um, 0 0.00002 plus 0 0.00005. And we're going to read that as two and 624,025 millionths. All right. Now, just as to close up our lesson here, small decimals are often used in science. And like I said, in life, math happens. So let's apply it to science. So, so for example, a garden snail moves very slowly. In one hour, it travels, ooh, how do we say that again? It is 483 ten thousandths of a kilometer. 
we read this number as 483 ten thousandths. Okay? Well, sound travels very fast, exact opposite. It would take that decimal minutes for sound to travel from one end of a football field to the other. We read this as 46 ten thousandths. Okay? And lastly, my last example is the diameter of a human hair is, whoa, look at that decimal. Well, again, we, re we would look to all the, the last decimal place, and it's a whole number, it's 25, so what is that decimal place? It's millions, so we read that as 25 millionths of a meter. 25 millionths of a meter, that's so crazy. So that's our lesson, we're just exploring decimals, um, and, uh, and we're going to a very, very large amount of digits, but it's important to remember that we're, we're in base 10 math, we multiply 10 times the position before it, and what we learned here is how to read it. That's kind of what I want you to understand is we're reading it a little bit differently and we're using expanded form a little bit differently uh, as we expand it out with all the decimal places. So that's the end of our lesson and uh, thanks for listening and I, I want to remind you yet, yet, uh, yet again that in life math happens. Take care.